If you start out in Clip Studio Paint, you may not be aware of all the capabilities of the text tool. This is because quite a few of its features are hidden away. So let's unlock the secrets of the text tool and learn how to use it more effectively. Unlocking options with subtool details. In the bottom right corner of the tool property window, you will find a small wrench icon. This represents the subtool detail option. You can also activate this window by going to window subtool detail. This new window now lists a whole set of additional options for your currently selected tool. You may think, but isn't it kind of inconvenient to hide away some options in a separate window? And that's true. It's also why you can toggle all of these options to be displayed or hidden in the tool property window. Simply click the gray box to the left of the arrow button on the left side of any option. This will show an eye icon in the box meaning that this option is now visible in the tool property window. Likewise, click the eye icon to hide the option again. The neat thing is that this applies to every tool, not just the text tool. The subtool detail window may just be hiding some additional features you never knew about, so make sure to explore and experiment with it. However, the focus of this video still is the text tool. So let's look at some of the options we now have access to that I find helpful when working with text in Clip Studio Paint. Text and text boxes. Let's go back to the very basics. If you use the text tool for the very first time, you will probably use it like this. Click anywhere on the canvas, then start typing. This creates text on the canvas. You might have noticed the drag drop-down menu in the tool property window. By default, this should be set to none. However, you can select create text box here. Let's give that a try. This option means that instead of just clicking to create text, you create a text box. But what is the difference? For one, a text box constrains the space that is available for text. With a text box, as of Clip Studio Paint 2.0, by default, the Wrap Text at Frame option will be selected. This means that if the text would have extended beyond the width of a text box frame, instead, a new line of text is created. You can find this option in the Subtool Detail, Text Window, and Menu. By selecting it or deselecting it, you can change text to a text box, or vice versa. Another difference is how text versus a text box can be transformed. Let's try to make both of these examples more narrow. While regular text gets squashed and transformed, the text box ensures the text stays the same, except that more line breaks are introduced. The basics of speech bubbles. If you are using the text tool in Clip Studio Paint, there's a good chance you want to use it to create a comic, manga, or webtoon. And in such a case, you might want to have text be present in a speech bubble. Now, you could draw speech bubbles by hand on a separate layer, or you could use Clip Studio Paint's balloon tool. If you already have a text layer present, whether it's regular text or a box, simply select that layer, then select one of the balloon subtools and click and drag to create a speech bubble and link it to that text. Alternatively, use the balloon pen tool to still hand draw the speech bubble, except with the added benefits of using the balloon tool. Keep in mind that you can use the balloon tool multiple times if you want to create a more complex speech bubble shape. You can even use the tail tool and add one or multiple tails to the balloon. If you now use the move tool, you will find that the speech bubble and text will move together. But what if you're unhappy with the placement of the text, the size of the bubble, or anything like that? When using the object tool, you can separately select both the text, bubbles, and any tails. You could also use the text tool, but that will only let you select the text, not the other elements. 
You can also make adjustments to the line color, fill color, brush size or even brush style of the bubble. Finally, you can use the correct line tool and all of its subtools to further modify an already drawn balloon. This means you could pinch and drag the line, simplify it, modify individual control points or simply increase or decrease the line width. There are a lot of intricacies to using the balloon tool, but these are the basics you need to get started with the tool. Styling and formatting text. Let's get back to the actual text within the speech bubbles. One of the most important features is being able to pick a font and text size. Within a text box, alignment also becomes relevant. In most cases for creating comic dialogue, you'll probably want this to be justified, rather than aligned to the left or right. But there are some more options to adjust the text. You can squash or stretch individual letters with the subtool detail, font, horizontal or vertical ratio options. One use case I find helpful is increasing the horizontal ratio if I need a longer dash than is present in a font. The character spacing option allows for the space between individual letters to appear more narrow or wide. In my opinion, this can be an interesting option to let it appear as if a character is speaking quickly or slowly. However, it's important to still keep in mind readability and not go for values that are too extreme. Similarly, in the line space slash alignment section, you can adjust how much room there is between each line of text. With the style options, you can even easily give your text an italicized or bold effect, even if these options are not included in the font you want to use. Creating text outlines. One option you might have noticed in the font section is outline. This changes your text to only appear as an outline instead of full text. For my usage, I don't find this option to work particularly well. You only have two options for how thick the outline is, which makes it hard to read. If you want to add an outline to your text, I would suggest the following method. Make sure the text is on its own layer. If the text layer already includes a speech bubble, use the object tool to only select the text and use edit cut to cut out the text. Next, add a new blank layer, then use Edit Paste to put the text on its own layer. Now, open the Layer Property window. Here, select the Effect Border Effect option. You can choose the border color and thickness. Of course, this applies to the entire text layer. If you only want to highlight one word, which is possible with the Outline option, I would still suggest using this method by using multiple text layers to achieve the effect. Font lists. When picking a font, you might notice a drop down menu at the bottom that says All Fonts. This menu lets you create and pick from font lists. This can be a time saver if you, for example, have a lot of fonts and work on multiple different comics that each use a variety of different fonts. This way, you don't have to scroll and scroll to find the ones you need, but have quick access to the ones you use the most. To create a font list, click the gear icon next to All Fonts. Here, you can click the bottom left corner to create a new font list. Now, simply place a check mark next to the fonts you want included in the list. You can press OK and then you can select your font list from the drop down menu the next time you open it. Another useful option in the font list menu is being able to switch how the list of fonts is displayed. It can either be just the name of the font, the name of the font displayed in the font, or your currently selected text displayed in the font. Ligatures. One more option you might have noticed in the font section of the subtool detail window is ligatures. By default, this is enabled. This is a new feature that was added in Clip Studio Paint 2.0. What are ligatures? They are combinations of two specific letters. Not every font includes them, but some do. Especially for handwritten fonts, 
This option can help create more variety in how the text appears, adding to a handwritten feeling. I would definitely recommend enabling this option, but if for some reason you don't like the look of a ligature in a specific font, now you know how to turn it off. Transforming text. Next, I want to look at the transformation settings section and the mode option. You can choose how text should be transformed when you use the resize handles. By default, this is set to scale rotate, but I find it can be interesting to have the option to skew the text. If you want to apply more drastic transformations to your text, like you might be used to from transforming artwork, you'll find that this is not possible. The mesh transformation tool, for example, is simply unavailable when you have a text layer selected. However, you can still make a copy of your current layer and then raster the copy, then transform that copy. This way, you can create interesting text effects such as characters appearing dazed or tired, or maybe even just shouting something over a distance. 5 Tips for Creating Text in Clip Studio Paint There are plenty more features in the text tool that however only have limited uses, as far as I'm personally concerned. Regardless, I hope that this overview helped you gain a basic or maybe even deeper understanding of the tool. Before we end this tutorial, I would like to leave you with 10 hot tips for using text. One half of these tips will address the functionality of Clip Studio Paint, and the other half will address the usage of text in comics in general. Tip number one, format multiple instances of text at once. Select the text tool, open the subtool detail window, then go to the operation section. Here you can select drag option. This lets you determine what happens when you click and drag with the text tool. By default it will create a new text box, but for now let's switch it to select text. Then go into the editing properties section and select apply to selected text. Now when you select text, any changes you make apply to every single text or text box that you have selected. This can be an easy way to save time if, for example, you decide to switch the font in your comic after already having created a lot of pages. Tip number two, create a default formatting for your text. Anytime you do not have text selected and make changes to the text style and formatting, the current options will now apply anytime you create new text. The neat thing about this is that you could even save that specific text option as a subtool and name it accordingly. If you switch between various formatting styles, this could prove a huge time saver. Tip number three, include separate instances of text on a single layer. If you want to create complex speech bubbles with multiple shapes that are connected, you might need to create separate text boxes on a single layer. In the Subtool Detail window and the Edit Settings section, you'll find the How to Add option. By default, this will be set to Detect Position. This means that if you click or click and drag to add text within the speech bubble shape, it will automatically add the text on the same layer for you. If you click outside of the shape, it adds a new text layer. You can also change this option to either always create a new layer or to always add to selected text. Keep in mind that if you use the merge layer feature on text or balloon layers, this will also combine those elements onto the same layer while still retaining editability. Tip number four, use search layers to find text layers quickly. If you are working on a big file with lots of layers, this can be a huge time saver. Open the window Search Layer menu. In the drop down menu here, select Text Balloon Layer. You will immediately find all available layers of this type listed. Tip number five Position text evenly with the Alignment Tools. Open the window Align Distribute menu. This new feature in Clip Studio Paint 2.0 will help you orderly place text very quickly. For more information about this feature, take a look at my other tutorial, 
how and when to use a line and distribute. 5 tips for making text look good in your comics. Tip number 1. Even if you use fonts, hand letter special text instances. Let's take our previous example of a character yelling. We managed to make it look pretty cool by transforming the text, but since it's just the same letter repeated over and over, it looks a bit boring and bland regardless. In instances such as this, I find it helpful to hand letter the text. It's a bit more work, but it will look a lot more interesting. Tip number two, don't overload speech bubbles. As I've demonstrated, you can create separate balloon shapes and text boxes per layer and even connect them with the tail feature. Anytime you put longer text into your comic, I would recommend making use of this. Sometimes you do need a lot of text, but breaking it up makes it a lot easier to read. It also helps create mental pauses in the dialogue, as people will read it. This will make the dialogue seem a lot more natural. Tip number three, create your own font. This will help give your comic a unique aesthetic. There are many ways to create a font, but personally I used Calligrapher and found it to be a very helpful and easy to use service. Tip number four, try to keep a unified text size. The advantage of sticking to a single text size for all of your dialogue in a comic is that it means you can use smaller or larger text sizes to convey louder or quieter dialogue. Of course, small variations might not be noticed and can help you find room for text in a pinch. Ideally, you shouldn't have to do that in the first place, which brings me to my final tip. Tip number five. When creating a comic page, start by adding all text first. I find it really helpful to first add all the text from a comic page's script before ever sketching the comic. This helps me see how much space I have available for the art. I personally dislike when I read a comic and see a panel where it seems like the speech bubble was an afterthought, as it seems to cover up quite a lot of the artwork or the composition appears cramped. By placing text first, I get an idea of whether I might have to lower the amount of dialogue in a given page, and I know exactly how much space I have available for the art and can plan compositions around the text, rather than have to fit the text into the compositions. And with that, we've reached the end. Thank you for watching, and as always, if you have any questions, comment below, and I will try to answer them.